Hey everyone, welcome back. And uh, in this episode, we're going to round up the stock management in our hold stock for when we're placing an order. So if you remember, we're still subtracting from our actual stock and not the stock that we're holding. So the way we want to handle this is the moment we're holding the stock it will, using our session. So this is ideally how we want to relate the stock that's on hold to the person that's holding it. So let's go into our domain layer, let's go into models, and let's go into stock on hold. And let's add another property here. Let's call it string and session ID. Cool. And then what we can do, let's go into pages, let's go into checkout and into payment.cshtml. And Right before we create the order here, let's uh, go ahead and bring out our session ID. We go into our HTTP context session ID, and that's a string. So the way we want to pass it, we can pass the session into create order here, but that's not ideal. We want to go into the request and let's create a property here and let's again, session id right and we want to pass it in our request here so session id session id cool let's close our payment.cs and um, close our stock on hold we'll do the migrations later let's handle the functionality in our create order first since the quantity will be already subtracted we don't really need to subtract it here so Let's delete this and we don't need stock to update. All we need to do is we need to go to stock on hold. And here, what we want to do is get session ID, request session ID. All right. And here we have stocks to update. Let's rename this to stock on hold let's go to our context stock on hold remove range and remove the stock that we're holding for this customer and the rest should stay relatively simple so let's go ahead into our database layer let's create the migration so done that if startup Project. Uh, oh. Stock on hold. Session ID. And let's update our database. Oh. Another thing we want to do is when we place, um, when we add it to cart right here with stock on hold this is where we actually want to store our session id as well so session id session a no. ID. let's grab it from here cool so now we're actually registering the id when we save our stock on hold in our database another thing we want to consider doing is updating the expiry date as the user is going actively through the site so Let's just say copy this and let's do stock on hold. Stock on hold where session ID equals request equals ID to list. And let's do it right after here. So for each stock in stock on hold, stock dot expiry date, we will say date time dot. Now add minutes 20. All right, so anytime they add a new item, we will update the 
expiry time and make sure the expiry time is kind of up to date. There are way this is not an ideal way to handle this, by the way. I'm just saying. Uh, it will be probably better by adding a filter and doing it as the person is making requests to the site. But this is sort of gonna be like a little band-aid solution and uh, might explore filters. If you want guys, leave me a comment. If you want to explore filters, leave me a comment. After completing these tutorials, I'll show you how to refactor the code to implement that filter and do it properly. Otherwise, if you're happy with this solution, we'll leave it at that. Um, so yeah, now let's go ahead and uh, see this work. While this is firing up again, let's open up Our databases. I mean our tables. And again, let's do just a test one. So we'll add two here. Let's refresh. So we have six now. And here we have two and expiry date. And we have the session ID as well, which is just a big GUI. Uh, so let's take a look at the time here. So 2203. And let's add another product. Let's take an extra large. And let's add five of those. Submit. Now let's refresh. And you can see that the time has updated to the latest time that we have added the stock. And it belongs to the same user. So now let's go ahead to the checkout. Submit the information and enter the card details. Cool. Now that the order has been placed, let's check out the stock. No, uh, only the extra large quantity should change here. Cool. So it's subtracted to five, and this, all of this, should be deleted. Cool. So it works nicely. Um, Again, short episode doesn't really require much time to implement, but rather requires you to sort of spot that these problems can occur and sort of you should be trying to think what sort of cracks you have in your program, what can seep through. And really, this is, this is what web development, I think, is about. More so than building complicated code, you build robust code that you know is not going to allow faults to happen but yeah uh thanks for watching guys uh, and girls if there are any of you uh, leave a like subscribe if you enjoy these videos share if you share videos and uh, if you have any questions you know what to do leave them in the comments i'll try to answer your questions and as always see you in the next episode